Okay, three o'clock. So let's start. Uh, welcome and thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Tobias Semmelmann and together with my colleague Stefan Stauber, we will show you today um, how easy value stream modeling can be using our software SimFSM. Uh, on the slide here, you can see a small overview with some uh, general instructions. The user, usual uh, stuff in this uh, kind of online meeting. So please uh, mute your microphone during the webinar. The session, as it is written here, will be recorded and will be made available to you afterwards. Uh, my colleague Stefan Staber will guide you through this webinar today. So if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to uh, ask them after the presentation uh, using your microphone or just use the chat function. And now I will leave the floor to my colleague, Mr. Stauber. Stefan, you have to unmute yourself. Thanks, uh, Tobias. Uh, also, a very warm welcome from my, uh, from my side. My name is Stefan Stauber. I'm uh, the branch manager here in our subsidiary of Simplan in Regensburg, and I'm uh, in charge of uh, the product called uh, C uh, SimVSM, which is uh, more or less uh, developed uh, uh, in uh, Regensburg. First of all, before we have uh, jump into the, the tool itself, uh, a few general points uh, regarding value stream mapping. Uh, as you may know, it, it, it's a method out of the lean uh, management. Uh, it's used to, to analyze the current state of a production line or design in the design phase uh, future state of, of a, a production system. It normally focuses on a one product or at least a product group uh, covering the complete uh, material flow or the complete flow from the supplier as a source until uh, the product reaches the customer as a more or less drain. And it's a tool to visualize and to display all critical steps within a process uh, environment uh, and uh, tries to, to quantify uh, the time needed for uh, throughput or uh, also to cover the overall utilization of certain uh, process, uh, process steps. The most important part is that the value stream not just covers the material flow, it also considers the information flow, who is controlling uh, which uh, process uh, more or less. In general, um, you may have used, uh, seen this different symbols here, just a selection of, of the standard icons, which normally are used to, to model and build up a value stream map. Uh, it's still a very manually done process uh, that means on a brown paper or board, right at the production line, uh, the value stream is, is built up and, and maintained. And as you see on the left, uh, on the right side, uh, a lot of additional informations are, are added to this value stream just to get a good picture of the overall flow, the potentials or the, the uh, the points uh, or the areas of, of improvement uh, which should be done in, in, in the future. All these uh, things are uh, more or less, as I said, done manually. So we came up uh, not just with us, another solution who tries to, to digitize, uh, the value stream as you can do with uh, Visio or other uh, tools. We really came up with the solution to support the complete workflow uh, 
of the value stream uh, mapping uh, process. That means we try to build up a platform. You see a screenshot right in the middle where we make uh, the symbols uh, accessible to the user. And as he would do on the brown paper or on the board, he is capable to add the symbols uh, and model the value stream uh, on uh, with our tool and with a lot of additional functions and, and configurations just to add uh, more value uh, to this uh, value stream. So it's not just digitizing uh, a value stream, it's also designed as a workflow tool. I think that's the most important thing. Here, you, before we jump into the, the, the online uh, demo, uh, uh, just a few impressions uh, of the, the few screenshots on, on several devices you see here. So it's uh, not a desktop tool. It, you can run it as an app on, on uh, tablet devices. Uh, it, it's running on iOS or on Apple systems, on, on Microsoft uh, tablets, and also in uh, the Android uh, environment. So it's uh, not depending on any uh, system uh, platform itself. That were just a few slides uh, to get a very short introduction uh, uh, to our tool. Uh, I just pull uh, up or open up our um, application. So you should see the, the first screen if you log in, in into the application uh, SimVSM. Uh, where I now can select um, or generate a new uh, value stream. I just that you get a good feeling about what steps uh, would you do if you start a project from from scratch. Uh, I would open uh, a new uh, project. I give the project a name and then I say create project. Then more or less you are already, it's opening up the, the working environment. As in other uh, uh, software tools on, on the far left uh, side, you'll see the different available menus where you can switch to the, 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 to the settings, uh, to the statistics and, and other uh, main uh, functions. The most important part is here in the blue, uh, uh, area you will find all available objects uh, within the, the sim vsm tool you find all the this uh, icons as i have showed you before you also will find here uh, i just zoom a little bit out uh, you see the complete set of of different symbols representing the supplier the production uh, planning system the supplier, customer, different groups of, uh, of uh, processes, a single process, assembly process, uh, parallel processes, and, and so on. Then, of course, uh, uh, elements for, for inventory, buffer, uh, buffers uh, for uh, transports, uh, some special uh, I, um, process like uh, rework stations, but also a schedule box or uh, icons to to uh, for Kaizen or information or simply text uh, to place uh, text uh, into the modeling area. In, in the middle, you see it's it's now white, uh, the modeling area, and normally you would start by drag and dropping into the system uh, your objects. Normally, if in the value stream, uh, you normally start from the the end, so that means uh, from the customer. So I just place the object 
uh, in the modeling area, it opens up uh, the uh, the object configurations or settings, uh, and it automatically asks me for entering an object name. Uh, in, in this case, I just uh, enter a customer name, and uh, then uh, I already have the object with its, its uh, right name within the modeling area. And then I can start to build up, okay, the next process. I have like a, a shipping sh shipping process. Uh, the shipping is done by an external transport, uh, uh, which is uh, DHL, for example. And then I can add the material flow here. So I just connect these items. And now I already have, a, a sh of course, just a section of a value stream. But by dragging and dropping the elements into these uh, modeling area by connecting these objects, uh, uh, telling the system, uh, are they directly linked together? Are their internal transports uh, used uh, to uh, to transport the material from one process uh, to the next one? Or uh, I can also add the product planning system, and then of course the customer has to order uh, his products from the production planning system. So I can build up my complete uh, value stream. If I want to see um, the values specified within the process, I also by uh, double clicking on the screen, I already see the yeah the actual values uh, which are right now configured for this element uh, on the the modeling area, and of course I can change all these informations uh, down here in this section where I can uh, change the variability, the setup time. Uh, I can add uh, products uh, uh, which are processed uh, within this uh, process. That's how you normally would start to, to build up and configure uh, your value stream. Because of, of course it, it needs some time. Uh, I have prepared already uh, one uh, value stream down here, which is more or less, yeah, a little bit uh, not a linear uh, value stream. You see here uh, diverging or uh, convert uh, or or um, assembly uh, processes uh, which are used in here you see not just one customer you see several customers you see several suppliers all this level of detail can be chosen to build up a, a value stream uh, map so it's not necessarily that you just stick to a product or just a product group you even can consider within your value stream several product groups or products. You will see down here, if I, for example, double click to get more detailed information uh, for the customer A, for example, he orders two different products, product A, B, product uh, part B, C, and this customer just orders uh, one product part B, C. So, uh, and both products are, yeah, coming in as raw material uh, from different suppliers, are using different transport ways, or uh, the material is then stored in the in, yeah, storage area of receiving, and then uh, the overall process starts to, yeah, process these items. Uh, through the receiving process, then it's going in another storage area. From there, it's it's more or less splitting up depending on the part. 
which is processed in this line. We have just the raw part uh, processed within this line. On the other line, uh, the other two raw parts are, are processed, even split it up on, on different uh, processes here. Uh, and at the end, we have the final, uh, let's call it assembly stage, final assembly station, where the final products are, are mounted. And uh, um, so just to give you an idea uh, that it's possible to build even more complex uh, value streams. Um, to support the user, uh, the tool itself has uh, several additional functions uh, to, um, to mark, to pinpoint out exceptions or, um, yeah, um, or exception handling. Uh, for example, you see down here uh, several colored points with different colors. Uh, for example, if it's blue, that means uh, this process has uh, some setup times configured uh, where, uh, where depending from uh, if the part changes, which is processed in this uh, within this process, then additional time uh, will apply uh, to the process for for the setup. Uh, within here, you see if a uh, red dot means there is certain availability, so it's not 100% um, available. This process, so we have a lot of, of breakdowns. Uh, so I can see this information. But I also see if there is a, a, yeah, a rework uh, uh, necessary, so I can configure a certain amount of products or pieces are marked as rework parts and are will add uh, also additional time uh, to the process uh, to the overall process processing time uh, of this product uh, within the uh, uh, process. So uh, that's one point where I can see very quick where are these exceptions. On the other side, I have uh, several options to customize even the, the symbols. So by clicking down here, I have uh, several icons available, which I can then select and, and uh, which are then uh, shown on, on the screen. Uh, I can, yeah increase or the, the symbol size to to sim, uh, to show that's maybe a very critical part or very important uh, process or area within your your value stream you could also add yeah pictures i'm not sure whether it will work right now because my camera is blocked by by teams so normally if you, if you have a uh, um, uh, are using it in, in with the tablet, uh, you will be capable to make uh, pictures and attach them as a, a type of uh, image documentation uh, to, uh, to this for a special uh, process. And uh, of course, you, as you see already in these blue marked areas down here, uh, you get already uh, some static uh, key indicators of this value stream. For example, uh, the uh, cycle time uh, for this product uh, for the customer. You get the API, every part, every inventory uh, information there, the cycle times, the customer related uh, cycle time, or the throughput rate, uh, for example, if you specified uh, a scrap rate as you uh, uh, it's shown down here, uh, then of course uh, it, uh, not all 100% of, of the parts are uh, passing this process. In, in this case, 5% of the, the parts are marked as uh, scrap and will not be forwarded to the next uh, process.
And uh, a very important thing, because it's not clearly defined in, in the literature, how you ca really calculate the, the throughput time from the source, from the supplier to the customer. Uh, and you, uh, as you see here in the modeling area, there are uh, several layers with different colors. And uh, every color or every layer represents uh, uh, a layer of the timeline uh, down here. That means all the elements, uh, if you look at this, uh, the middle one here, the main line, all the elements placed within the material flow of this layer will be shown in one timeline function down here. And the timeline function, as you see here, it's uh, split it up in value added and non value added services. That means, and it's calculated based on the configuration of these elements. For example, if I would just, uh, for example, I can uh, switch this receiving process from uh, value adding to non value adding process, then you will realize that it's immediately jumping and accounted uh, for the non value added throughput times. And as you know, at, at the end, uh, more or less the, the, the two different types of non value added and value added. Uh, processing times are added and then uh, the flow grade is, is calculated. And of course, if I want to to shift certain parts of, of uh, or if I just want to look at certain part of this uh, value stream in a separate way to calculate the, the, the timeline, for example, I could just mark these objects, oops, move them move them down in a new layer and you will see immediately it's adding a new layer down here and of course i get now the layer uh, the layer the timeline oops down here uh, especially just for these throughput of this section of the value stream so it's it's very flexible to interact uh, with this uh, how I want to look at the, the value stream. So far, I just have showed you the functions related uh, for to digitize the, the value stream uh, and the calculations which are were done a more static way. The big benefit uh, we gain now uh, with the uh, with the simulation. As soon as I have set up the value stream, it's also possible to simulate this value stream. What I do then is I just uh, hand over, uh, I, I select the, the menu where I can select the value stream, and now I can start the value stream. Uh, for uh, simulating. What's happening now is that uh, the, the, all the informations of the value stream are packed uh, and sent to a backend server uh, where uh, the so-called SIM controller is now uh, building up automatically in a, in a generic way. It's building up uh, or starting a simulation instance of a plant simulation. That's the, the, the simulator we are using. It's handing over all the information to the simulation model. Uh, it's starting the simulation model. It's then running in the background. At the end, it's collecting uh, the statistic results and then it's sending it back to the, the, the front end, uh, to the user. Uh, you can uh, see the, the overall progress of the simulation. I'm right now, I think, simulating five or, or I think five days. And as soon as uh, uh, it's finished, you will see that uh, there will be a green bar popping up at the bottom, which tells me 
that the simulation results, I've received the, res uh, the, the simulation results, uh, they are also marked green. That means it, uh, the, the simulation itself was uh, successful. And now I can switch to the, uh, the, um, the menu uh, for the results. And there I get now a complete picture of um, a lot of uh, um, results of the simulation run. First of all, I just will pinpoint out the most Im important ones. Uh, of course, I see the process utilizations of the different processes I have within my uh, value stream. So every process has its own bars uh, where I see uh, the um, the states the process was uh, during the simulation uh, run. Uh, I see uh, what was the percentage for when it was really working, what was the percentage used uh, for setup time, for failure, for reworking, uh, for uh, waiting times, so we differentiate, uh, differentiate between pull and push uh, systems, so it's split it in, in different uh, waiting states where it was blocked, so the process cannot get rid of its um, material because the other, uh, the next process cannot, uh, is not accessing or allowing to forward the, the product. Uh, if I have break, uh, uh, breaks within uh, the shift model, of course, uh, I will see them at, as a specific state or unplanned time where no shift model is active. Uh, and here just, uh, for example, a few of these uh, states with um, different uh, configurations like here we have uh, failures here setup times here i have breaks and and uh, shift model with uh, where it's not uh, completely active so that's one view i also get the view okay if i want to improve what is my at, at the moment what is my bottleneck process i can look at the output statistic uh, what uh, parts uh, per hour did the customer uh, receive so i get them on a timeline on an hourly base or i can switch on a daily base and and i get the results how many parts were delivered to the customer i get uh, and and think i think that's a very important thing is because that really shows the dynamic of a system is for every buffer, for every, every storage area. I get now a good view on, on the timeline, on the, on the behavior of, of these buffers. Just select the, the average values, uh, for example, within this uh, buffer in, in the receiving where all the, the suppliers are uh, um, uh, bringing their their raw materials, uh, uh, you will see that based on the overall processing of these uh, raw parts within the uh, value stream, they show a different uh, behavior. So the raw part B, for example, it's very stable, uh, continuously flow. It's not really building up very much uh, raw part C. It's always a large amount is coming in and then it's it's dropping down, coming in, dropping down and, and so on. And raw part A, it's more or less, yeah, stable for quite a while and then increasing again if the supplier uh, uh, brings the next uh, amount of, of ordered uh, raw parts. So, and throughout the system, I can look at, at, at the, the shipping buffer, for example. Uh, of course, uh, we see different behaviors. And uh, I can look at this from, from the part, uh, um, from, yeah, the quantity of every uh, single product, but 
throughout the system, it's handled by transport unit. So in a process, for example, can collect 40 parts of uh, a quantity of 40 of a certain product and then hand it over with one loading device to the next process. So that's therefore it's really important also to look not just on the quantity of parts, on the other side, it's important to look on the number of load units or carriers which are uh, transported between the different processes. And then there, of course, I, I get a different picture uh, onto the, the material flow handled throughout the, 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 the value stream. So you see down here a, a, a large range of different groups of, of statistics that really depends what I'm exactly looking for, what process I want to, to investigate more in detail. So the, the system will provide you a lot of, of uh, basic statistics uh, where you can uh, then get a good feeling for the, the, the system uh, behavior of your value stream. And uh, as I said, the, the biggest advantage is now, for example, if I want to make apply changes to the system, I can very easily make a, a copy. Little copy of the value stream. Then I have to one to one, a one, -to -one copy uh, of it. And for example, I just uh, increase now the availability. I start the simulation run again with the new parameters. Meanwhile, I show you uh, also very new function because it looks not just on the uh, material flow and the, the system behavior. We also have um, it's called value stream 4.0 or a swim lane functionality. So I can switch to the swim lane functionality. And now you will be see, uh, you see also um, all the processes which are used or uh, within the system listed above here with certain, um, yeah, uh, information uh, lines uh, which I have set up to document uh, certain things. And now I can uh, build up, the, uh, I focus on the information flow. So if I have the receiving process, so the paperwork is coming into the receiving process with the truck, with the delivery. So there I have an information flow. Later on, the, the receiving uh, guy is confirming it in the ERP system. And now I can go through and can say, okay, in the ERP system, then gives uh, an order to the drilling system. From there, it reports uh, uh, some information, heads over uh, some information to the shop floor and the process control and, and, and so on. So I can build up a complete map of the information flow. So which process is receiving which information uh, uh, from which part of uh, the IT system and uh, what information is uh, uh, later on handed over to uh, uh, to the uh, or is reported back to the the uh, IT system. So I can build up a complete or document a complete map of the information flow and in which uh, systems are related. Uh, uh, or connected to which uh, system. And of course, I can then add all these informations and pull down certain information, the frequency, the recording time, the actual value. So I also can document a lot of uh, important values uh, within this uh, swim lane view of the swim VSM. So in the meantime, I switch back to the 
our uh, new experiment. Uh, as you see down here, uh, I have re now received also the results of the the uh, uh, the copy of my uh, value stream, and then now I switch back to the statistic view. And of course, it's it's important that I can directly compare this uh, uh, information. Uh, uh, with the old uh, value stream, and then I'm capable to select uh, both value streams. And now I will get a directly comparison between the two uh, uh, different uh, results of the two uh, value streams. And as I said, uh, as I showed you, I just changed uh, the the variability here in the final assembly, where I reduced it from 80 to 100% availability. Therefore, the state is not occurring in the second simulation run. And uh, I see the, the, the direct impact of uh, uh, this change. Of course, it's just uh, yeah, a simple example. Normally, you would work through the value stream as you do in reality to find the, the bottlenecks, to analyze what would improve or get rid of the bottleneck. You would apply the change, you would validate it against the simulation run, you see the impact. Based on that, you would work through the uh, value stream and your, uh, through your potential uh, improvements. So it's very easy to use, comes with, with a very good online help, which can be uh, directly uh, accessed uh, through the, the, the app or through the uh, application. And uh, as I said before, switching back to the, the slides to, uh, to round up the, the uh, web session, is as, as already said, uh, we have a lot of additional uh, functionalities. One, for example, which I haven't showed you, but it's also uh, available, is that directly within the app you can make uh, time measurements. So it has more or less a stopwatch functionality. That means on site you don't need a clock or something else where you document your, your measurements. You can uh, do it directly within uh, the, the application. You can uh, document uh, by pictures, photos, and, and, and so on. You can attach to the material flow. You even can place, I haven't showed that, uh, measuring uh, points within your value stream to monitor the throughput time within the simulation from one point uh, to, a, to a defined, from a defined point to a defined point. And of course, that's uh, I did show you that you can change the, the symbols of the icons to customize. Even we can uh, provide our customers, even if they have their own set of, of icons, we can provide them uh, their own uh, icons within the application. Um, I can set up uh, shift models, uh, availabilities. Uh, I can define the the time frame where I want to, to simulate uh, 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 to get rid, for example, of, of ramp up times, it's possible to say, OK, run 12 days, but please take the first three days. Don't consider them for the for the statistical calculations. And of course, we have in, in certain areas of the value stream, it's possible to to um, to have uh, to configure variations. Uh, that means uh, uh, within here uh, the it's a snapshot from the customer, uh, which orders every hour 360 parts of a certain product, uh, and with this variation, I can specify that uh, every hour I have plus minus 50% of the 360 quantity. So I get also there some uh, realistic uh, variations uh, and not a constant uh, uh, value uh, every time frame. Um, as I said, uh, if 
it's used just as a standalone version uh, as a front end on the different uh, devices uh, which are available it's um, it can be used just to digitize the value stream and to get the, the static calculations as soon as it's hooked up to the back end uh, system with this I named it, uh, or it's called SIM controller, which is more or less coordinating all the activities between the front end and the, this back end. Uh, uh, then, of course, you have the whole package, uh, we call it ZimBSM Pro, uh, where it's also possible to, to run uh, the, the, the simulation part of the, the, the system. To summarize, what, what are the more or less the, the USP of, of uh, this uh, software opposed uh, uh, approach? It's more or less uh, right now the only one app based uh, uh, possibility to for uh, digitalization of a value stream. It's already integrating these uh, value stream 4.0 swim lane solution. Um, uh, to document uh, the little bit more regarding the information flow in the, within this value streams. And then, of course, uh, the direct link uh, to a material flow simulation. Uh, as I mentioned before, we use a plant simulation in the background, the product of, of Siemens, a very powerful uh, simulation tool. Uh, you have, as I've showed you, uh, direct comparison of static and dynamic uh, KPIs. Uh, even if you have different alternatives uh, within your uh, value stream project, you can directly compare these uh, KPIs. It's yeah, more or less easy to use. It is a high grade. Um, uh, customizable uh, toolbox icons, but also the naming uh, conventions can be adopted to the the CI uh, of, an, uh, of a company. And uh, one part I haven't showed you, but uh, it's also a, a function as soon as you're working with this backend uh, environment, it's possible to share uh, value streams uh, with other users and also to archive uh, uh, these uh, informations uh, on, on the server, not on your local device. So also there it offers uh, yeah, a wide range uh, of options. Last not, oops, last, oops, sorry, last not least, there's a few more if you want or if you want a few more informations or tutorials or some online demos of uh, the tool itself, you can access them. Uh, through these uh, web links, which we will provide uh, with the slide sets and the link to the uh, the video, uh, and then you also will capable uh, you will be capable to access even more uh, information of uh, our system. Okay, so. That was a very fast, quick overview about our solution. I hope you could get some input ideas, what's, uh, how it can be used, how you can work with it. And uh, as Tobias mentioned before, we of course are available for yeah, questions. Yeah, thank you, Stefan, for this uh, interesting presentation and demonstration. Uh, we have some questions in the in the chat, and I just uh, read them now. The first question was if there is a possibility to filter for some specific information. So, is it possible to show the VSM for a specific product in a complex overall value stream? Uh, oh. 
okay. It's not possible to just uh, reduce it by like a filter command to to search for um, certain flow of a, a product throughout the, the value stream. However, in very large value streams, you can look, uh, you can search for specific, uh, yeah, uh, objects. Uh, but that's the only function right now to 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 filter, uh, yeah, specific. Uh, for specific objects, not on a part level. OK, thank you. Then the next question is uh, if there is a way to uh, compare different states. So as as is state with a to be state, like in uh, plant simulation with the function compare models. Uh, no, it's not uh, possible so far. It, it's on the roadmap. That we have some like a window where I uh, uh, have a direct comparison of two value streams with the highlighted sections where they uh, differ, but uh, that's not yet available. Okay, then a question regarding the simulation model in plant simulation. Is it uh, being built with plant simulation on the background or is the VSM library used? It's um, in the background, it's the VSM library. Uh, that's a good point. Meanwhile, we are also developing the Siemens VSM library. It's not not, not the Siemens library anymore. It, it was handed over to us. So we are uh, responsible for the further developments, which started a year ago. But of, of course, will be always in, in, in the future will be synchronized with all activities uh, on, on the, the, the SIM VSM uh, side. OK, thank you. Next question is uh, how do we as Simplan see the tool as a, as a standalone solution or as a previous uh, step to real simulation? Um, okay, it, it, it's, yeah, let's say if the um, a simulation expert would work with the, um, with the topic of uh, value stream mapping, we would also recommend that he sticks with the plant simulation environment because it, it, it still has more functionalities and options. Uh, uh, in, in the integrated uh, VSM library. But for the value stream analyst, it's it's more or less reducing the complexity to the to the points which it nearly needs during the, the value stream mapping process. And uh, so we recommend to use it as a the as a front end application. Okay, two questions remaining. Um, how do we sell this tool was a question. Uh, is there a evaluation period or get uh, can we can uh, it be rented for some months? <laughs> okay, a good question. First of all, of course, we offer an evaluation period. Normally we say, okay, uh, uh, three weeks uh, we provide uh, the, the the sim VSM pro version uh, on our test system that means uh, you will get an installation on on uh, on your desktop for the front end and the back end that the, the would be uh, running on our uh, test system for three weeks uh, so then you can evalu evaluate all the the, the functions uh, and then uh, meanwhile it's possible that we you can buy the computer complete package uh, of the SIM VSM. So also the, the, the SIM controller and the plant license or so the backend is, is running in your environment or uh, uh, it also, also can be done as a subscription model on a yearly base. That's brand new uh, because it's always a licensing issue with the plant simulation and, and the license agreements there. 
but meanwhile we can also offer their subscription uh, models. Okay, uh, one, okay, not actually not the last question. Uh, one more question regarding the app stores. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can switch to the chat. There is a picture yeah, of the uh, different in-app uh, possibilities okay. to buy. And with the question was, which is the pro okay. version? Okay, right now we are not allowed to sell the the SIM VSM Pro version through the App Store. Through the App Store, it's always the standalone versions, and the 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 different packages which are offered there are just uh, adding uh, functionalities. How you can, uh, which functions you can use for document or uh, uh, for for to digitize certain things. As soon as you, we switch to the pro version, uh, we have to discuss what's the best setup, but we are not right now with the uh, Siemens licensing, we are not allowed to sell uh, simulation as a service on the market. That's why it's a little bit more, more complicated. We can offer half a year of the system by a certain, yeah, um, uh, if 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 a customer wants to have a longer uh, time period to to evaluate the the, the SimVSM Pro version, we can offer it uh, on um, on a monthly base, but maximum for six months. And then you have to make the decision whether you want to buy the the complete system uh, on on a license base or on a buying the, the package or subscribe for the package. Other options, it, it, uh, we are discussing it with Siemens, but uh, right now there are uh, some limitations, unfortunately. Okay, that, uh, that's it for the app stores. But the last question now is, uh, is there a possibility to get the software directly from us uh, rather than from the various app stores? Uh, Yes, if if you don't uh, the apps as an app version, we have to distribute it through the the app stores. There is no other way. But for for the desktop versions, Microsoft tech desktop versions, or even for Mac desktop versions, uh, you we can provide the complete package uh, directly. Okay, thank you. One. The last question is just being typed. Okay, the question is about a uh, summary of components that the client has to uh, have installed to run this, uh, this, uh, the application. Okay, the complete package you need uh, the, the front end the app or the desktop application of uh, SimVSM then it's on the back end uh, it's more or less two components one is the the sim controller it's a sim plan owned product uh, sim controller uh, has to be installed there and on the other side you need a plant installation the minimum requirement there is that it's a, a runtime uh, license of, of uh, plant simulation. The runtime includes uh, also uh, all the licenses for for uh, the interface package and the VSM license. So runtime is uh, enough. And these are the three components. Um, that's very scalable. So that means if you have, uh, we have, um, you can have a floating license. Uh, that means if you buy four, uh, five licenses, you can install the front end uh, on ten and and uh, even more uh, uh, fr uh, front end uh, devices. Uh, but only five users then can use the system in the same time. Uh, so it's it's very scalable. And you're on the other side. We could also uh, offer the functions that uh, the the plant simulation runs that we not just uh, 
communicate with one simulation models uh, that also we we coordinate uh, several uh, simulation runs in in parallel so, so also there we are scale uh, scalable uh, there but plant simulation sim controller front end that are the three main components Okay, I see that one more question is coming up. Okay, let's wait. But you also can unmute your microphone. It's it's. Hello, good afternoon. This is Christian speaking. Hi, Christian. Hi, Stefan. Uh, I am a user of Plant Simulation. I'm located in Brazil. Okay. Well, welcome. And, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, and so, th finally, you, you did some um, English speaking webinars. <laughs> I was trying, to, I, I watched some uh, German ones, but uh, unfortunately I could not understand. Uh, I'm happy you did one in English. And yeah, I, I am a, um, a freelancer simulation consultant. I'm using uh, plant simulation and, oh. and other also flexing. Okay. And if I had to offer, um, if I had to, then I would like to speak more with you uh, about the possibility to sell this solution in Brazil and, and or use it in in Brazil. I have contact with the Fiat Group. I am based in uh, in Belo Horizonte, that cl is close to the Fiat plant, Stellantis now, Stellantis plant, and they have uh, plant simulation licenses. I have done some uh, simulations in uh, for the an engine uh, production line, mm -hmm. and um, I could an idea I came up with uh, uh, is that I could offer to them this solution. I could help you selling this solution, um, and so maybe it could be interesting for both of us to to have some deals uh, about this i don't know if you're interested in in some support to sell your solution to, to get to know the solution yeah. maybe we could um we could organize a project um, with fiat and um, where we could uh make a, a an experiment using the trial version that uh, you said the evaluation three-week evaluation to get them to know this uh, interesting solution because I don't know if you know but Stellantis uh, they use uh, world-class manufacturing they okay. implemented uh, world-class manufacturing a lot so it's part of the logistic pillar the VSM mm -hmm. they use it frequently this tool so they might be interested in um, digitalize uh, the VSM because they also have the what they call work class technology is something that is parallel to the work class manufacturing. So they are developing uh, strongly these um, digitalizing tools. They want to digitalize um, their manufacturing as well. This could be one part of their solution. Um, yeah, uh, we are very open, and as I said, we, we will also support any evaluation period, uh, and and we are just building up our our network throughout the world. So uh, we we can stay in 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 contact or discuss afterwards uh, what what steps are are necessary or what what's uh, what is the best approach. Yeah. Uh, to 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 address uh, this new way of how things are done within the uh, value stream mapping. 
And uh, yeah, it, it, because it, so far as as far as I know, they are still using Excel to do their yes. their yes. Uh, VSM, and I'm yeah, yeah I yeah. found it really interesting, especially yeah, uh, yeah all this this um, also I, I found interesting this the capability to measure time measure to do a time measurement on the floor with the, your phone with the, the tablet you can um, uh, yeah gather information on this on the gamba yeah and so, yeah uh, that's interesting yeah all right all yeah maybe we can we can yeah. speak further on the next week we can yeah yeah set up a meeting specifically to talk about this I can send you some uh, time slots. What what time is it right now in Brazil? It's early in we the have, morning, I guess. It's or? 11 in the morning, yes. Okay. Five hour, hours earlier. Okay. I, I will send you some time slots and then we can continue our uh, discussion. Yeah. All right. No? Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Christian. Bye bye. Bye bye. No, I'm switching off my I'm okay. muting. <laughs> okay. Okay then, thank you for joining us. And if there aren't any more questions. Nope. nope, okay. Then yeah, thanks again for joining us. Thank you Stefan for the interesting presentation. You're and Stay healthy. Stay healthy and maybe we can uh, we see each other another time. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye.